camp. 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 <laughs> oh, it's a lovely day to be here on the roof at the Harris Museum in Preston, ready for episode three, the season finale of Camp in the Collection with me, your host, Harry Clayton Wright. When I was a child, my dad once told me I was guilty of camping it up. Well, who's hosting a series for the Harris Museum in Preston about camping it up now, Dad? Me! I am! That's who! If you're looking for an extended introduction about the history of camp, then you're going to have to look towards episodes one and two. Thank you for the video inserts, Roland, because we've got a lot to get through today, looking at the fine art and history collections. So, one last time, let's get going and find all things camp. Shh, don't tell anyone, but we've snuck down to the basement to show you some exclusive camp items like never before. <laughs> A famous scholar, Brittany Jean Spears, once said, there's only two types of people in the world, the ones that entertain and the ones that observe. Being from Blackpool, I love the circus. And here we have two entertainers. One, a little bit ashes to ashes with a something about Mary Quiff and this showgirl draped in finery. We love to see it. Camp, hashtag free Brittany. Dressing up by John Strevens from 1947. This is a painting of John's children, quite simply, dressing up. And it reminds me of that innocence of childhood and that wonderful feeling of putting on some fancy clothes and feeling very special and beautiful indeed. I can even show you what that looked like for me with this photo insert of a young Harry in my favorite pink number and black beret. In a letter to Sidney Pavier, curator and art director at the Harris from 1926 to 1959, John said that this work offered a complete U-turn as prior to painting it, his work had been dull and academic. I love that his kids offered that spark and I love the kids wearing something so fabulous and feeling so wonderful, so camp, we love. Dorette by Gerald Brockhurst, 1933. Gerald Brockhurst was a celebrated portraitist who had painted the likes of film stars Merle Oberon and Marlene Dietrich. Dorette was the nickname given by Brockhurst to his model, Kathleen Woodward, who became his second wife in 1947. Purchased by the Harris Museum from the Royal Academy in 1933 for the grand old sum of £750. I'm guessing that would be quite a lot of money today. But don't ask me how much, I didn't Google it. The Lancashire Daily Post said at the time of Durette, the art gallery has never been so thronged since it came. People see it and they come back to it to look into that enigmatic face as visitors to the Louvre try to penetrate the mask of the Mona Lisa's smile. But it would be remiss of us to feature Durette and not talk about her stunning eyebrows. Camp! A Puppy Teasing a Frog by Sir Edward Landseer from 1824. Edward Landseer was a child prodigy who exhibited works at the Royal Academy from the age of just 13 years old. Although very famous for his paintings of animals, Landseer's best known works would be the lion sculptures in Trafalgar Square. I am absolutely here for this puppy's limp wrist. Is he? You know. This is Clytie from 1880 by sculptor Luigi Fabrucci under the personal direction of George Frederick Watts and his studio. Clytie was a water nymph in love with Helios, the personified god of the sun, who at one time had loved Clytie back. Helios went and had it off with someone else, another nymph, and Clytie was, as to be expected, not best pleased. 
Intending to win her love back, she told the other nymph's father, who then went and buried his own daughter alive. That is some major slut shaming right there. Well, this only hardened Helios's heart, and he left Clytie to watch her unrequited love fly across the sky each day. Clytie lay herself naked for nine days on the rocks, simply staring at the sun without drinking or eating anything. On the ninth day, she was transformed into a sunflower, always turning to face the sun. The drama of it all, very extra. It's like an ancient Greek Taui. Well, I would say Clytie has a sense of mournful camp, but camp nonetheless. Clytie, I will never look at a sunflower and not think of you. Camp. An Idyll of Spring by Alfred East from 1897. Because being attacked by swans while naked is camp, if you ask me. <laughs>while some of the items in the history collections aren't as descriptive as to where they came from, what their background is or who they were donated by, they absolutely have to be seen to be believed as the camp items we love to see. Having spent the afternoon having a rummage in the history stores, looking through the items, I'm delighted to show you some of my absolutely favourite pieces, so come with me now and let's have a look. collection of dolls. This one reminds me of Kate Winslet as Rose from the movie Titanic. I don't see what any of the fuss is about. It doesn't look any bigger than the Mauritania. The Harris holds a collection of over 500 postcards and greeting cards and it just so happens that I have a safe search on eBay for vintage unused cards. In fact, I would say it's my kink. Here are just a few of my favourites. Oh, they're lovely, aren't they? Cigarette cards are trading cards issued by tobacco manufacturers to stiffen cigarette packaging and often advertise the brands. Adorned with actresses, sports stars or animals, or potentially giving us a glimpse into the humour of the times. The Harris holds a collection of more than 800 cards dating from the 1910s to the 1960s. And here are just a few of my favourite animals. Here's a montage of photos taken at the Juvenile Fancy Dress Ball at the Public Hall, 21st of January, 1897. Turning looks, stunting pretty, these are the kids from Preston City, dressed as Pulcinella, Pierrette and Pierrot, and a courtier of the 17th century. I'm just simply obsessed that kids in Preston were dressing up like this in 1897. I've said it before and I'll say it again. Preston, you are here is a Dick Whittington silent film poster from 1913, rescued from a now demolished theatre in Preston. I've never seen such a big dick poster. Look at it. This dick is huge. Dick and his pussy on their way to London. And look who's in the background. This cow. <laughs> Love her. Dick and a kitten heel. Love that. Could this be any camper? I think not. <laughs> oh, Dick. <laughs> Love you, Dick. With some little film magic, I'll be able to show you our final item, which is one of my absolute favourites. Carnival Queen. A photo by Noel Coombs. The first Preston Carnival was held on the 26th of May, 1975, which is the date this photograph was taken. I absolutely love it. That dress is just beyond stunning and so incredible. It's high camp, it's beautiful, and I love it. Love, love, love. It has been an absolute joy to host this series. What we set out to achieve when we created Camp in the Collection was to try and bring some entertainment and happiness to you all, into your homes or wherever you are at this very tricky and trying time in the world, as that's what camp can do, and what it means to me and what it brings is joy. 
I'm going to leave you with one final quote from Bruce Le Bruce. Camp is, by its very nature, political, subversive, and even revolutionary. Thank you, and good night. Harry has left the Harris.